Hello, my name is Chris, and I started some YouTube videos a while back, and I'm trying to learn how to record videos, not through my phone, because my phone would cut me short, and I wouldn't be able to finish the videos. So I've been having the been having the desire to share my videos my on my faith and I think that that's kind of where I want to try to go mainly I also want to share about my life experiences um, with some projects maybe gardening mechanics whatever I learned along the way that the Lord teaches me and um, shows me about how I can help others I will definitely try to make videos about that also so but this video and a lot of my videos are going to be about my faith and what God has revealed to me and and I just want to share with y'all how y'all can have a relationship with God and how y'all can know God and what God showed me and I want to show you because I think it's important that we're not deceived by so many lies there's so many lies to take us away from who God is to take us away from the truth that only God can give us the devil wants to steal kill and destroy that's his mission his mission is to steal kill and destroy that's what the Bible says can I be cut hold on I'm having like things pop up on my screen it says this Mac cannot rec connect to iCloud because of a problem with of uh, Jesus okay what well, yeah but anyway later I hope that didn't affect the video all right I'm sorry uh Something popped up on my screen. I'm trying to think about that. I hope it didn't mess up anything. But anyway, I'm going to keep on talking about how the devil deceives people. The devil deceives people through religion. The devil deceives people through the lust that that uh, he, like just like he did with Adam and Eve, he deceived, he deceived Eve into eating the apple. Because of her lust, God told her not to eat the apple. Uh, I'm sorry, God told Adam not to eat the apple. And I think Adam told Eve not to eat the apple. Or well, maybe God told both of them, don't eat that apple off of that tree. And Eve ate the apple. And she deceived Adam into eating the apple too. But anyway, the whole point of what was to show you how Satan deceives us. And he can use things like our weaknesses, like lust. Lust is a major weakness that we all have, okay? So we all lust for things. We have to control our, our lust, and we have to... Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. We have to exercise the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, okay? Joy, peace, long-suffering... Uh, wait, what was the other one? Oh, uh, there's, there's like seven of them. Long piece. I don't know. There's one of them I'm thinking about right now, but I can't. But there's four other ones. Joy, love, and the one I'm talking about now, which was long suffering or something. And so we have to ask ourselves, oh, self-control, that's what it is. Self-control, we have to exercise it. It's a fruit of the Spirit. So just like our muscles, you know, we have to exercise our muscles to build them up. We have to exercise our body to stay in shape. Well, we have to exercise the Spirit of God to so that the Spirit of God can grow inside of us. And it's not... Uh, the Bible also says that physical exercise profits a little but spiritual exercise profits much it profits in every kind of way see physical exercise only profits for a little while because we all are gonna die right so we die and our bodies die with us and and if you're not saved 
Well, if you're saved, let's just say this. If you're saved, you'll have a resurrected body. So who cares about this body? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This body is going to pass away and go into the grave. In our new bodies, no more sickness, no more death, no more any kind of tort, you know, hurt or suffering. Everything is going to be fixed. So therefore, the physical exercise only profits a little while. While the spiritual exercise that we do last forever like winning souls for example might save somebody and and that would last forever because that person will be around to to repay us forever in heaven or God would reward us for our labor that we're saving souls it says in the Bible that even when one person comes to repentance that the, all the angels in heaven rejoice because of that one soul. So it's very important to God and to the angels in heaven that souls are being won here on earth because when, it, when this life, this life that God gives us is over, that there's like, you know, you go and you're ready to be judged. So it's better to, to know now and to share now what God reveals to us because life's too short not to share because you know if you don't share in time then somebody might not hear somebody might not ever repent or change their way or their life like to line up with God's will and then God's gonna judge that person and they're gonna go to hell so and I would have been in hell too if nobody would have shared the gospel with me but thank God somebody actually shared the gospel with me. And I, I did turn from my old selfish fleshly desires. And I'm constantly renewing my mind. Constantly with the word of God. Not just I'm already there, but I'm renewing. I'm constantly working this out. And that's the thing about Christianity it's not, oh, yeah, I said the sinner's prayer, I said the Lord's prayer, I got forgiveness, and I don't have to do anything anymore. Well, being a Christian is like, okay, you say the sinner's prayer, and then you're always constantly changing your, your things to line up with God's will. So it's a never-ending process until you die, you know, and you're always learning, and you're always doing the right thing. It's no reason to stress out over, but it's a very good thing to understand that you're not finished. God's not done with you. He needs to mold you. He needs to train you in His ways. Anyway, so I don't want to go on and on. Uh, I want to try to make a point here, but I didn't train for this. This is kind of a spur of the moment thing. But my main goal is to warn you about the deception of religion because there is a lot of truth and um, there's only one God if you think about it how can multiple gods create everything you don't know that's not the way it works there's one God and he created everything just like the Bible says in Genesis it says in the beginning God created and then it explains to you what God created and everything is revealed through God's creation. It also says that in Romans, it, in Romans chapter 1, I think it is, it says that, that everybody knows that God exists because of His creation. They see that there is a Creator. But some people never accept the Lord because of their hardened hearts. So everybody's without excuse because God reveals himself through his creation and his word explains this and that's why it's so important you have to have a biblical foundation you have to know what the Bible says because you want to be prepared for when the devil tries to deceive you like the devil deceived Adam and Eve anyway so through one person sin entered into the world and that was through Adam, of course. But through one person, we have forgiveness of sins and by, by Jesus Christ, who was, who was God, 
who was God. He was a fully God, fully man, but yet he had he was the perfect sacrifice. He was the only perfect man. And he was the only person who was able to die for our sins. So we have to understand that Jesus is God. Okay, that's Colossians chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, and, and a couple other places in the Bible that verify that. But it's very important to know that Jesus is God. Because Jesus, John 14, 6, is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So the devil likes to say, well, you know, uh, Jesus isn't the only way. Well, there is only one way. And Jesus is the only way to God the Father. The Bible says, John 14, I guess it's John 14, 7, that... Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. No man goes to God without first going through Jesus. So, if you read John 14, 6, it says exactly this. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through Him. So, you can't go to God through Allah. You can't go to God through Buddha. You can't go to God that way or that way or that way. It has to be through Jesus. The the Bible says Matthew seven twenty or seven Matthew chapter seven, somewhere in Matthew chapter seven the Bible says that uh what oh the way is narrow that leads to life. Well the way is narrow, very narrow, because it's only one way. And Jesus is the way. John 14, 6. The way is narrow. It's like this, you know, because you have to go through Jesus. But the way is broad that leads to destruction. That's everything else. That's everywhere else. So you can't go everywhere else. You can't go through Allah. You can't go through Buddha. You can't go through Muhammad or any other false god because they're, they don't hear you, they don't, God doesn't recognize them as the person that's going to pay your sin debt. John, or not John, uh, okay, Romans something, in Romans it talks about the wages of sin is death. The wages, we have like a sin, sin, a death sentence because our sin is keeping us from from God and God's holy. You see our sin, God hates sin, but God is holy, so we have a, a sin debt that has to be paid, and it was paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember in the Old Testament they had to sacrifice animals. This video is gonna be very long, but it's the first video I did in a long time and I'm just trying to there there's so much out there that I need to tell y'all. And I can't possibly fit this in, you know, in two minutes. So it might be a 20-minute video, but there's just so much in the Bible that I have to tell y'all, you know. And uh, just warn y'all about about religion because religion is very deceptive, you know. The devil uses religion. The devil, the devil doesn't care if you go to church because, you know, there's so many churches that are being used by the devil that the devil uses because the church really isn't just a building the church the real church the church of Jesus Christ is not a building it's the gathering of God's you know the believers uh, the gather uh, the gathering of God's bride Jesus' bride Jesus is the bridegroom those who are born again and have received Jesus as the Lord and the Savior, God, Jesus recognizes them as the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ is basically the church of Christ. Because, yeah, you know, it's just the way the Bible describes it. Like, if I had a wife, when I get my wife, who, who I'll tell y'all about her one day, she'll probably be here 
maybe hopefully in the next month or two she lives in the Philippines and yeah we'll talk about her later but anyway when I get a wife if I had um, you know I want to take care of her well God Jesus takes care of the church the same way as I would want to take care of the bride or actually he tells us to take care of our brides the way he takes care of the church because I could never do what Jesus does for the church it's just you know Jesus died for the church Jesus died for his bride those who would the bride would be those who were faithful to Jesus and who came with undefiled they were pure they were they were righteous they were holy not by what they did but by the grace of God they were able to repent turn from their sins and by following God they were able to you know get rid of all the filth and the evil that was once contaminating them um to make them pure and holy like basically like a virgin i mean not that we're all you know perfect or anything like that but it's just the fact it describes the cleansing process of what how jesus cleanses us you know and 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 by his holiness it like rubs off on his you know his followers and it becomes their holiness anyway so he's able to tell us that's why it's important to read your bible so you'll know what to do and what not to do so i don't want to go in like a thousand different directions because a lot of people who are probably watching just wondering one simple thing how how do i get saved and the answer is very simple it's just so simple you have to acknowledge jesus christ is your lord and savior John 14, 6, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to God but through Jesus. So it's so simple, and the answer is right there. You have to acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And you can't go to God without first going through His Son who paid your sin debt. And that's why it's taking so long because I tried to describe everything. But your sin debt has to be paid. You have a sin debt. God is holy. He has no part with sin. But He loves the sinner. He wants them to come to repentance. He doesn't desire that any should perish. But all should have eternal life. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. And turns, turns from their sin. God will forgive their sins. Because God... And there is nothing, no sin debt that God can't pay. There's nothing that you did in your life that's unforgivable. If you turn with your mind and your heart right now and ask Jesus to forgive your sins, He'll forgive you. But you have to turn from your sin. You can't just, oh Lord, forgive me, and then go back and turn to your sin. No, that's not what it is. It's you have to turn from your sins. If you don't do that, you never fully turned around and made a U-turn and started following God. You cannot follow God and follow yourself. You have to make a U-turn and you have to follow God. So it's like this. You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You deny yourself. You pick up your cross and you follow God. It's just like that. It's so simple. It sounds complicated, but it's simple. It's I keep repeating the same thing is what it is because I want y'all to understand that you have to follow God. You can't just say, I'm a Christian. You have to follow God. And that means denying yourself. Really, not just denying yourself because it's denying your flesh, your flesh, okay? When it says deny yourself, we have a flesh nature, okay? We are ourselves. You can't deny yourself. Oh, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. You have a, a, you are yourself. So by denying yourself, the Bible's talking about denying your flesh, okay? That's what I want you to see. Your flesh nature is at war against the spirit man. Your spirit nature wants you to follow God. Your spirit want you to love your enemies pray for those who abuse you you know i want you to to walk the second mile i want you to 
treat others like you want to be treated, even your enemies. I want you to uh, see, well, basically the spirit is this, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and all the rest of them. There's seven of them. I can't remember what it was. And then um, your flesh nature is this, fornication, idolatry, adultery, sleeping, basically sleeping with your girlfriend, if you're not married, there's a way to do things, God's way of doing things is to get married, okay, first of all, anybody who's sleeping with a girlfriend is not doing the will of God, because God wants you to get married, simple as that, I'm sorry, I know it's, it's, you know, it hurts people who, who don't know right now, but that's not the Lord's will, he doesn't care if you love that person, you'll marry that person. He doesn't want to hear, oh, well, you know what, we love each other. We're, you know, we're not, uh, we're not sleeping around with everybody else. We're doing this. God wants you to devote your life with that person before you jump into a sexual relationship with somebody. He wants you to get married. Tie the knot, you know. It's a covenant. And the reason why he wants you to get married is because you're entering into a covenant with that person. The same thing he wants to do with us. We're, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're entering into a covenant with him. When we give and turn our lives over to him. And it's the same thing with the wife. We enter into a covenant with her. We're tying the knot, basically. We do the same thing. When we enter into the new covenant of Jesus Christ, we tie the knot with God. We say, I'm, I'm going all in. I'm not going to have any other gods. I'm not going to serve any other God. I'm not going to do any. I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to be my Savior. Same thing with the, a wife, you know, and you're entering into covenant. I'm going to be with this woman. I'm going to uh, be with her the rest of my life. I'm never going to cheat on her. I'm never going to. I'm going to try to take care of her. And do the best I can to provide for her, you know, and to, yeah, everything like that. But, so this video is 22 minutes. I'm going to try to make it 25 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to cut back a little bit with like rambling and I'm going to try to get to the point. Alright, so you got Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through Him. And I already told you why. Because he paid the sin debt, which the wages of sin was death. But by his sacrifice on dying on the cross, he was able to pay our sin debt. And by accepting him as our Lord and Savior, we're able to have our sin debt wiped clean. So we follow him, he wipes our sin debt away. And yeah, so that's the salvation message. message. <laughs> And it's a long message, but there's a lot involved with it. And there's so much more I want to tell y'all. And I can't do it because I, I can't keep my focus. I can't keep my train of thought going on one particular thing. Because there's so many things that intertwine with each other in the Bible. You can't just read one passage. It's like the Holy Spirit is just moving all around. And the Bible, you know, so when I think of one passage and I get somewhere else, it they all make sense. The Bible is completely the most, the best book in the world because it's the only book that can do that. You'll like, you'll, something in Genesis can connect with something at the very end of the book. And it's so amazing how God does that. But um, it's all about His Son, you know, all the Old Testament reveals the glory of Jesus Christ and you know so uh, just want you to know the importance of uh, this message is just to tell you the simple gospel message of Jesus Christ and there's so much more but I'm keeping it simple I'm gonna stop this video right now at 25 minutes because I don't wanna have too long of a video but I will be making more videos just like this one. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, please don't hit the dislike button. <laughs> and uh, if you liked it, please subscribe. And if the Holy Spirit's living in you, I'm sure you're going to have 
uh, the same ideas and the same thoughts as I do. So I hope to see you around in the next video. Thank you. Let's see.